Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your mindfulness and meditation coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, a mindfulness coach, positive psychology practitioner, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today is freestyle. We haven't done a freestyle in weeks. We've been having a lot of guests in our podcast, and naturally, her and I are just busy, right, doing our daily lives, and me, I'm going back to school, studying a new avenue of dealing with people as far as positivity, right? We don't know about positivity. And what we don't know is that positivity is short uh, micro moments of positivity. Have you ever noticed things that go wrong in our life tend to last years and a lot longer, like a grudge? So um, yeah, so we're super, super busy. So I will start first giving a quick update what's going on with me. Uh, a lot of positive things have happened. I think the first thing is, is I'm considered now NLP practitioner. So it means neuro linguistic programming. Easy way to say that, right? Neuro linguistic programming sounds really broad. And uh, what does it really mean? You look it up on Google. That means I clients come to me with their model of the world, and I present them with a new model of the world so they can live life better. Because usually it's our beliefs or our principles that are in, and get in the way. Usually beliefs that get in the way of how we want to live our life. We we're frustrated with certain things or elements of our life and get really frustrated. So taking into account if we change the way we view the world. We could thus can change ourselves and the way we view ourselves in that world it makes a total difference. So I got that right now and all stand to be a positive psychology practitioner. Um, and what a great program. I'm incorporate this in my business. I'm also going to rebranding myself as well, too. Super cool. And one thing that's kind of important I've been doing the last couple of days was really researching going back to school and to get a degree in psychology so not a psychologist a psychology and that's really really amazing ah i almost forgot one thing uh so i did my 30-day challenge videos so i started on february 10th i said if i can do seven days with the videos without stopping i would do 30 days so i went from february 10th to february 17th then i said you know what let's go to march 10th make it a month right did a month now we're going almost to april 10th about two or three, three weeks away, and I'm still shooting a video daily and now figuring new ways to rebrand my content. Oh my God, so, so amazing. So amazing. And the first thing that happened today, um, I had you know, Ray um, as my coach. You know, you know Ray, she's been on our podcast a couple of times, actually, one time and on our virtual uh, summit. Um, this was the first time where we're, we're always stuck in between two things we're stuck in where we are and where we want to be. In this case, I'm stuck in the old identity of being, come, being a trainer. People know me as a trainer. When they see me, the first thing they think about is training. Oh, you must be a trainer. And it's like, okay, that's, yes, that was a part of my journey. It was part of my life, but things have changed. Now, we did a certain um, meditation, look at the higher self. It was really, really good. And um, I actually did something. So my virtual gym is downstairs. I turn my clients virtually. 
I went down there. I opened the door to the basement and I said, this is no longer me. I closed the door, went back upstairs, got back on our call. She said, I did it right then and there. Because while the energy is present, you have to do something to engage the energy. Mm-hmm. So I did that. And it's kind of, kind of a really thing that I never experienced. So later on that day, after a call that morning at 4.30, I had a client in a virtual gym. And um, as soon as I walked down the stores, I got this headache. I was feeling shortness of breath. I was feeling dizzy. I had to open up my double doors to the, the backyard, go out there, get some fresh air, touch a tree. Because what happened is your body is going through these shifts and changes and it doesn't want to be down there. So it rejects where it wants to be at. So what happened is that also yesterday is all my RJ health and fitness shirts that I did with training, those that knew me as training. First time I put them in a, in a bag to donate. So I'm no longer even have the shirts that exist. So I'm like, wow. So, and I imagine myself being in a slingshot being thrown 100 yards to my new self, which is the the mindset, behavior, positive psychology practitioner, coach, and step into that new identity felt so freaking amazing. And as I looked behind an old personal trainer to run the bodybuilding, all this great stuff, it crumbled. And then the universe is kind of funny. So last night, I get a call. It's good about iPhone. If you have an iPhone and you call me through, through iPhone, it pops up, you know, to call our identity. So a person calls me up and asks me about training. I was like, oh, man, this is universe challenging me again. And what was kind of super duper cool is that um, she says, hey, well, I have a question about training. Oh, by the way, are you setting new clients? I was like, actually, no, I'm not. I actually am getting out of the training. I'm doing something else. Explain what I was doing. I helped guide her. What question to ask? I'm looking for a trainer. What's the price range? And training is very broad. It could be thirty dollars a session to a hundred dollars a session, two hundred dollars a session depends, right? What what their credentials are and what they do. So, and I said, no, I'm not doing training. And all that feels so amazing. Stepping into this new identity, stepping into my own power, and just taking faith over fear and knowing that the universe has me. It's so amazing. So enough mm-hmm. about me, Glory. What about <laughs> you? Darn it, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, I think. As um, Ray had mentioned that, it's what you call rebirth. You're going through a rebirth. Yeah, it is. It's like shedding, like I told her in in our call, it's like shedding, uh, picking a skin, like a a snake to grow bigger size or a crab. They have to Mm -hmm. shed their shell or they shed their skin. And snakes, they shed their skin. And really, it felt like I was shedding my skin to grow much more. And it's really ironic as I'm studying positive psychology, one of the modules talks about 24 strength characteristics. And this morning I took a survey. I think I took a survey a couple of years ago. I don't remember. And it's 24 characteristics. And obviously at 24 characteristics, we possess all of them, but some are stronger than others. In my case, spirituality was number one. And that's really ironic. I'm going through this new and path. You're going through that change. I'm going through yeah. these changes. I think years ago, I think something else was number one. I think was it curiosity, but all of them resonate exactly where I am. First one was curiosity. Uh, sorry, it's first one was spirituality. I made a mistake on that one, guys. And let me get this piece of paper out here because I'm going to talk about it one second. And I'm like, go there going into it. But I highlighted it. And the first one is spirituality. Second one is creativity. Third one is curiosity. Fourth one is love and learning. Fifth one is fairness. And all of them hit exactly where I'm at right now in my life. And what change I'm going through. So I should take it a year from now and see where I'm at then. Who knows, yeah. right? Isn't that amazing? Oh, heck yeah. This all these things we're learning I'm going through right now, you know, um, it's really kind of a fundamental thing. Is I was thinking about college, right? And what I thought about college was that I never finished. And it's always been on my list to finish college. And you talk to other people, and especially when I talked to Karina, oh, you should have done it back then. Why'd you wait so long? This Okay. We're not dead and I'm not dead. We can, we are great human beings. We always adapt to challenges and learn things new. How many people are working at Facebook that may not have a doctorate degree? How many people out there starting businesses that are very, um, think of Ray Kroc. He had no, he didn't have a high school diploma. He, he was able to hire the right people and able to, you know what, be known as Ray Kroc, the one that first bought McDonald's. So he was are wonderful. And even if then I was able to finish college, the problem with then is I was too, many, too much chasing tail. 
And me and my mate chasing tail, I was into, you know, sex. I was into women. I wanted to have sex and do all these great things that, that I thought would make me happy, not focus on my education. So now being older, now I have a determined focus of where I want to be. So even if I took college then, I wasn't focused enough to even accomplish that goal. So if I take it now, I will accomplish that goal. Mm -hmm. Totally different perspective. It was, yeah. <clears throat> and plus, maybe at that time, it's just not the right time for you yet, you know? It wasn't the right time for me. No. I mean, there was a, um, I saw this somewhere. I think it was in social media. Some lady, she was in her 90s. She barely got a degree in college. See? So you're never, how do I say this? You're never too old, you know, or it's never too late. It really isn't. The um, only when, time it's too late <clears throat> is when you're either cremated or buried, and by then you don't know the difference. Well, yeah, you're done. <laughs> you're, done. <laughs> you're done. You don't know the difference. So this, at that point, it does not matter. Exactly. I was thinking about um, when you um, – something came to mind when you're talking about the energy that the, this, the energy that created for you when you went down in, in your gym and went back up and – there's, um, I have a student who um, right now is stuck between two two different high schools that he wants to go to, right? And I've been talking to him about it all week. We just go back and forth about it. And it was, you know, trying to weigh it down, right? The pros and the cons, right? And one is that to him is this school is, I asked, why do you think this school would be better? Because it's a great school. How great, I mean, what's... So what is so much more better than this school than the other school, right? Uh, and then he's just like, it's just it's just a good school overall. And then we came down to, well, most of my friends are going there. Um, and then it's an all-boys school, right? And then the other one is co-ed. So it was like, well, if you're considering that school because most of your friends are going, how does that feel for you? I mean, you know, because it's not – you're not considering it because you want to go to that school. You're looking at it because this is a good school to go to because based on its reputation and then most of my friends are going, but I like the other school better. So then what is so hard? Anyways, he's torturing himself, right? Being stuck trying to figure out which school to go to. And they, I think the best advice that I gave him I think, in my opinion, <laughs> I don't know if it is for him, was to actually go into those school and see where you feel right at home. You know what? That's probably the best advice because he has he's stuck between two wants and you only choose a need, let's say. So happy he wants to go this direction because this provides a level of happiness. So this school is great with my friends, whatever. The other school also provides a level of happiness. The best way to do is, is get immersed in those environments and see what one works best for you. Mm-hmm. And he asked me, where do you see me? I said, and I, I gave him my answer, right? Which school? And he's like, yeah, I'm kind of, you know, I want to lean towards that way. I said, but what's, why are you still in the middle, right? And I had him, I encouraged him to talk to someone who knows a lot about the two schools. And then yesterday I asked him, so what happened? So now do you, you have, he has until Tuesday. He needs to turn in and make a decision. And he said, yeah, I didn't get anything out of that. <laughs> I was like, why? Because again, the person he talked to, he realized, well, she's very opinionated and um, she's leaning towards the other one. And I go, so it sounds like to me when you talk about this other school, it, you're not leaning towards it. I could feel the energy between the two of the way he speaks about it. But I told him the best thing to do is go to those school and ask for a, a tour or a shadow. Because unfortunately, the eighth graders... Um, this year, they didn't get to do, usually they shadow, um, they go into the high school and shadow, right, to check it out. They didn't get to do all that in person because um, of the pandemic. So it was all virtual. And honestly, that, it, it's not the same. No, it's it really, not. It's not the same feeling. And that's why, you know, I get it and I understand him. Because if you're looking at it online virtually and you're listening to someone talking, okay, what, yeah, you'll get something out of it, but the feeling is different of feeling like I'm going to the school. The reason why I'm saying this is because I've experienced it personally, not for me personally, but I know that I know what it's like to feel the energy when you're there, right? But I, my son experienced it. Again, it was this two same schools and I was leaning towards one 
And I kept pushing that one. But he shadowed up both and he gave me his answer. And I said, why that school? He said, because when I went there, I felt home. I felt like this is me. This is where I want to be. And this is, I was happy there. I felt the happiness when I was there. Wow. So it's the environment. So he right. went to the environment and it felt just, oh, this makes sense. So that's made, they've made a better decision. Mm -hmm. So I, no argument there, right? I left it because of course I would want him to go somewhere where he's going to be happy and not where he's being forced to go because that's where I want him to go. You know what I mean? Because I felt home at the other school, <laughs> but that's me. Mm. Maybe that was me, not him. For me, I felt like, God, this is him. This is where he should be, right? But now realizing he's growing up and he's changing. His own model and reality of the world versus yours. Right, exactly. When I sat there at that school, I felt home for me. Mm. So that's what it was. And so I gave the same advice to this boy. And I said, and, and that's why I was thinking about what you said earlier. It's because it does have, you could feel the energy if, if this is for you or not. And it, same thing in the, in the workforce, right? If you keep going to, let's say, and this happened to me um, when I used to work corporate, for three months, I kept pushing myself, pushing myself to, to go to work every single day, but it wasn't creating that kind of energy for me anymore. I was just low energy every day until I realized one day, I don't want to walk into that door anymore. <laughs> it's just not for me anymore. <laughs> right? Is, but, that, is that funny how that happens? Is that... It's like, you know, the training thing. I just walk through the downs. I mean, literally, it's like downstairs, okay? And I walk through there and I say, I don't want this anymore. I just don't want it anymore. Yeah. And that's how when I worked my full-time job. I woke up one day, I don't want this anymore. And I start making plans not to be there. I just don't want it anymore. And I am telling you, every time I walk 30 yards to get to the door, it felt like stone was in my feet. Like my feet were in locked in cement. I could not go one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. Going up 20 stairs, I felt exhausted. And I'm not, I'm not like, you know, four or 500 pounds or I'm not having a heart attack issue. But I don't have high blood pressure. But it's just, it's just when you're trying to um, fight the tide, right, mm -hmm. it seems much more of a struggle. Like my body's fighting, <laughs> fighting, yeah. not going up the stairs. It's fighting, not being this. Fighting, it's fighting, it's fighting because it doesn't want to be there. Energetically, it's already somewhere else. Yeah. And at that time, <clears throat> even when, you know, you quit your full-time job, even at that time, we didn't have coaches, right? Can you imagine if we had coaches oh. at that time? We probably would have oh my God. Well, been first, done uh, with that <laughs> right away. Let's, I mean, let's always consider one determining factor. We are where we should be at the right time. Yeah. Second determining factor is at that time, was I able to accept something different? Like, so now I can. Then can I? Another third factor is, is that this whole idea of having a psychologist, therapists, um, coaches, is a new thing. Okay. In the 90s, you only went to a therapist or coach if you had some really serious issues. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about at least, at least in our spectrum of where I grew up was you have to, the old thing was a few sounds to a picnic basket, a few bricks short of a load. So you have to have some serious mental problems like committing suicide, cutting yourself, always angry. You have to have some serious problems. Other than that, you just deal with your problems. You deal with them. And so now another factor is if I had all this awareness, then will I be where I am today? That's a question for you, Gloria. If you had that awareness, then. If you had all your awareness you oh, have today. Me? Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. If you had all your awareness that you have today, mm -hmm. 30 years ago, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. Would you be where you are today? I don't think so. Be a totally different trajectory. You don't know where that is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, think about you know? what would what you, I, mean, I wish I had this. Oh, yeah. I wish I had all this crap too, but I can be a totally different trajectory. Mm -hmm. I, could, I can be somewhere completely different. I don't want to be. I'm where yeah. I'm supposed to be right now. I'm going to be moving around, you know? I'm just, it's just funny and now I'm thinking about it I go god I remember that every time the building had elevators but I would always take the stairs and I was on the second floor I would always take the stairs um and 
it was just like every morning I used to be this happy, jo- like jolly kind of person. Like, good morning, good morning, saying good morning to everybody with a smile, right? And I just remember there's time where I just started feeling drained. And one month after, you know, where I started to feel it, like I said, I don't know if I want to be here anymore. And I'm just, I started dragging myself going up the stairs every morning and even just opening the door to the building. It was like, ah, oh, here I go again, another day. And, or, I started to feel it more when I would wake up in the morning. And I remember this is so funny. I'd wake up early morning, take a shower, and I'm staring at the closet. Like I'm standing in front of the closet staring. And I I remember, am I trying to figure out what to wear today? Or am I just like dragging, not wanting to go to work? And I would stand there and just stare. So I did that for like, I think, three months until I finally decided... It wasn't um, it wasn't healthy anymore because when you when you felt a headache before you walked into the gym, your um, your home gym. Right. I was feeling a lot of stress every time I even walk in before I even walk into the gym. I already felt stressed. Wow. See. Yeah. I remember that and I will never forget. And you know what? I never looked back. And since then I said, I'm not going, I'm not going to do corporate anymore. I'm done with corporate. But you that's, know. That's what you say. I'm getting <clears throat> the hell out of here, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was just a lot of stuff, you know, but anyway, so that's, yeah. So I like the the energy and I just wanted to kind of share that with, with the listeners that it really makes a huge difference when you're feeling it. When you step into that room, stand there and see if this is the one for you right? That's how you know it. And um, yeah. So another thing is I did, I think I was sharing this with you earlier before we recorded was um, just an update on my long lost father. (laughs) Well, he's found, right? He's found. Sorry, that that stepped stepped the gun on that one. (laughs) That's okay. No, (laughs) I think he's found. I think (laughs) this was, (laughs) I think it came in. It was a shocker for me um, when how this happened was so my my uncle, who is his cousin, who lives in San Francisco, I, I, I've been in touch with him here and there. I get an email from him like one o'clock in the morning and I thought it was one of those spam, you know, that happens sometimes, right? And right. it has his name and I, I wasn't putting it together. Plus it's late. And I'm thinking, why am I getting an email like this? But the email is for him and it has his name and his wife's name. And then at the end of the email, I see my name. It says, um, you know, I'm just wondering if you still have in contact or you're still in contact with Gloria. Um, Just wondering, just asking. And then it was it was my dad's name. And the funny thing is my uh, my uncle, he titled the email um, voice of the past. (laughs) Mm. I thought that was pretty funny. So at first I was thinking, what is this? But Here's the funny. Here's the thing: is that when I first saw that, and I realized what that email was about, and he forwarded it to me, and there's my dad's email address, which is his contact information. I felt, I felt, you know, I felt emotional. I felt like, I felt something in my heart. It wasn't so much of a a sharp pain, but I felt something like a pinch, and that got me really. It made me emotional. And at the same time, nervous. Why nervous? I think Something I always was, wanted. Right. I know, right? And and I was happy and I really felt happy. It's like, oh my God, I was super happy. I think I was nervous because um, for a minute there, I felt like, wait a minute, I'm get- I got too happy looking forward to this, but... I thought about, you know, could it be a repeat of history, right? Where, you know, my experiences of, oh, here we go again. Um, I get in contact and then disappears. Or once he hears from me, is he not going to respond back? Because I, you know, for me, I felt like at that time, it's like, man, you're playing with me. You're playing with my heart. You're playing with my emotions. You make me look forward to to um, having a kind of relationship with you. And then you just, you're gone. You disappear. And, and you know what? At that time, I, I didn't know any better, right? But now, now that I know better, um, everyone has a story. Mm-hmm. He has a story behind all that, and um, so I have to 
really work on that and look at that. But the moment I think we had this breakthrough with Dr. Pat in January, we talked about that too. The moment I had that breakthrough and like go, like go of this baggage, then this popped up. So for me, uh, that feeling of nervous, uh, being nervous again was I've already let go. Why is it that the time that I've let go and I feel good about it, that, you know, let go of that baggage, then here it comes Hmm. That was it. I think I just don't want to feel any more pain, you know, um, but I am going to take advantage of this. Of course, I have this information. I, you know what? You got to think about it. You you got something you always wanted once you let go of the old. So whatever that old belief you have or thought process or anger or whatever it may have been, before our breakthrough, and because we both had a breakthrough that day for those that haven't listened to that podcast yet, but um, when you let go of all that baggage, what popped up was something you always wanted. So when you let go, what you got in return is what you always wanted because you let go. So now, what are you going to do with that opportunity right now? I'm going to take that opportunity, and that is without a doubt um, when, you know, getting this last night and it was just last night when this happened, this message, and there wasn't any doubt. I, I know what I want to do, and I know what, that I'm going to do it. Okay, so you got your answer. Yeah, but you know, it's based on excitement too, right? But <laughs> I do that to myself sometimes back and forth. I think about it and I go, am I just too excited? And then, you know, but I have to like really let go of those negative thoughts because I just want to be happy. And this brought happiness to me. Yeah. That, so you, why, why, like if someone gives you a million dollars, you don't say, oh my God, you gave me a million dollars. Uh, are you sure? I don't, I don't know if I should take it. I'm too excited. No, you'll take that money and run, right? Fast as you can. Here you're given a great opportunity to hopefully, in this case, reconnect with your dad. Why would you let negative thoughts or, or what has happened in the past get in the way? Right. Exactly. So I want to, yeah, so I'm going to take advantage. I want to um, reconcile with him and reunite and see how um, things go. So congratulations. Thank you. You guys will be updated. I'll keep you guys posted <laughs> on this. You will hear about it. I, I want to hear about it. Um, yeah. I like it's just really, really cool. It's uh, it makes me think about opposite. So, you know, my, my relationship with my kids is not, as all of us would hope for, all of us hope for good relationships with our kids and, and for our family members, mom and dad, whatever. But sometimes things don't work out that way. But I'm really happy the fact that as I've gotten older and as they got gotten older, now they have phones, they can contact me. So I'm really happy the fact that now we're actually able to talk and build a better relationship with each other. Yeah. So, I mean, them taking advantage of my opportunity now, you know, if they call me up and want to talk to me, they text me, ask me questions. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's this this is a way in, and let's take full advantage of this, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, super excited. So you know what, guys, this is <clears throat> our quick, not quick, but I guess our update of what's been happening in the last month since we last did a freestyle. Oh my and god! And I hope you guys <laughs> see, you know what, a lot can happen in a month, and a lot can happen in a short amount of period. But the biggest thing is always continue to keep your mind open keep your curiosity present keep hope alive and know that if you really want something go after it and it's not you it's not what you want it's not achievable it's the environment so wherever whatever you want to do you have to make sure you have the right environment present in front of you to get what you need out of life um so Thank you for listening to another Freestyle Thursday. This is Ron Johnson, your behavior, mindset, positive psychology practitioner. And I'm going to say if you guys want to be a guest on our podcast, go to Facebook, Life's a Shuffle, with S, so Life's a Shuffle, and or go to www.lifesashuffle.com and bing, hit that contact button and become a guest and share your story. Share your story. The biggest thing that we're missing, one key element of life is a lot of us are afraid to share our story. And when we're afraid to share our story, we're not stepping or giving ourselves permission to be authentic and show up the way we want to show up. So again, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> just going back to adding on to what you said earlier, is that I think 
also is to taking that time or taking that time to just be in touch within yourself and to know what you really want and just taking a step back, give yourself some time. And again, this is Gloria, your mindfulness and meditation coach. Thank you for listening to another episode of Life Say Shuffle.